everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We got another great presentation today. We're going to teach you all about uh, cytomegalovirus, CMV, HHV5. Okay, again, my name is Pramil Chariat. I'm a program director, in internal medicine residency, transitional residency. I teach medical students and residents. I'm also a director of research as some professor of medicine. <clears throat> so, our topic is like uh, um, we want to finish everything about cytomegalovirus in like nine minutes. And the repeat in the medicine, everything is the repetition. If you keep on <clears throat> watching the video, repeat yourself, you're going to learn faster. Okay, you're going to remember that for a long term. Um, there's no point in watching like an hour long video, then you don't have time to repeat yourself. Okay, so repetition is the key, my friend. So let's start cytomegalovirus introduction. <clears throat> it's a large linear double stranded DNA beta human herpes virus, HHV5, spread through infected person's saliva or body. <clears throat> you have a healthy immune system, it's different. And an immunocompromised person is different. Two different scenarios can happen, okay? With a healthy person, it can kind of stay dormant and no problem. Immunocompetence, I mean immunocompromised people started having problems. So um, epidemiology, uh, general population is like 45 to 100 percent worldwide, occurs 0.2.2 percent of the uh, newborns. So it's a big um, infection. But most of the time they remain asymptomatic. So what is the pathophysiology? There are two types. One is primary infection and the other one is secondary infection. So primary, what happens is attachment you know, the virus, invasion to the host cell, then replication of the host cell, say to viremia, then hydroviremia may correlate with the likelihood of developing symptoms of severity of disease, and the viremia initially get quickly cleared by the most of the immunocompetent person, but, but some hematogenous spread can also lead to like hepatitis or encephalitis. Following acute phase, virus established lifelong latency or persistent in the CD3, um, CD3 for myeloid progenitor cells, possibly other myeloid lineage, lineage cells. So it kind of hide it unless get it reactivated, okay? The secondary infection may result from reactivation of the latent viral infection or potentially reinfection with the second strain. So impaired immunity, particularly with the people with cellular immunity in like solid uh, organ transplant, can lead to loss of immune control and reactivation of the disease. So what are the risk factors? Low socioeconomic factors, resistant, residents developing in the develop, uh, residents in the developing countries, transfusion of blood or leukocyte products, men who have sex with men, transplantation recipients, okay? Mm, um, transmission, um, most of the transmission through body fluids such as saliva, blood, sexual contacts, mother to fetus, neonatal, transplacental spreading, cervical contract. Again, we talk about transfusion, can, um, trans, I mean, it can be transmitted through transfusion of blood and leukocyte product, incubation period one to two months. So it's a very long incubation period. Signs and symptoms, most of the time remains asymptomatic if you don't have any immune related problem, okay? So symptomatic, you can have mononucleosis syndrome, typically occurs in patients with acute infection, fever, fatigue, rash, maculopapular or rubelliform rash. And the diagnosis, um, mainly you know, clinical like CMV infection of the patient with the mononucleosis like a syndrome, uh, non-specific systems like fever, fatigue, myalgia, lymphadenopathy, rash, splenomegaly, lymphocytosis, thrombocytopenia, mild elevated LFT. And then you have to rule out the other causes like the Epstein-Barr virus and all the other things, okay? So, the detection of the CMV uh, specific amino, immunoglobulin uh, IgM, such as recent infection, um, and the IgG, um, you can kind of talk about the latent infection or it's been a previous infection. So, what other blood tests you can do? A routine blood tests, you look for reactive lymphocytosis, anemia, thrombocytopenia, mild elevated hepatic transaminase, okay? And now let's look at the sensitivity and specificity of the test, PCR, pretty good sensitive. Test. So pick up this test is very important. 93% or 100%. <clears throat> so mainly you have to do patient is like uh, immunocompromised, and then it, there is ELISA antibody testing. Um, you can uh, primary infection from the past infection. Remember we talk about IgM is the recent infection, IgG previous infection. So you can do ELISA <clears throat> antibody testing. Sensitivity is 96% to 93%, and treatment is supportive care. Um, and uh, <clears throat> most immunocompetent patients, you can be supportive care, but immunocompromised severe disease, GAN cyclovir, 
uh, GAN cyclovir resistant CMV, you start with the foscarnet and uh, zidofovir. Okay, what are the complications? Colitis is the most common, and then other gastrointestinal diseases, gastroenteritis, duodenitis, ileitis, esophagitis, <coughs> you can call CNS, meningitis, encephalitis, transverse myelitis. And then hematological malignancies like hemocytica, hemolytic anemia, DIC, myeloid dysplastic changes, splenic rupture, venous thrombosis, pneumonia, so large myocarditis can also be caused. Thank you so much for watching our presentation. We'll be back with another presentation soon. Thank you.